All right, we have some health talk, and uh, joining us for that is uh, Dr. Dino Unifadi, who is uh, the CMO of Dr. Connect. He will be shedding some light on high blood pressure, the silent killer that it is. Now, just so you know, Dr. Dino is interested in developing the state of health in Lagos. And of course, uh, that's via the adoption of health technology and machine learning. Such a pleasure to have you in the studio as always. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Okay, so when I see blood pressure, the first thing that comes to my mind is oh, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just as an aside, I've always thought that some of these attacks people have, that they will say, ah, that man just suddenly suffered attack. I've observed that even in movies, the person is clutching his chest, but it's yeah. called an attack. Would you say it's even high blood pressure? That probably, you know, maybe the person just had a heart attack and they think it's spiritual. Would you say that? Well, it's not really about the blood pressure, but mm. you are very right. There's a correlation between the heart and the way the blood are being pumped all around. Mm. Of course, the heart is what pumps everything around. Yes. So, but most people that have heart attack doesn't necessarily have to have high blood pressure. In fact, a lot of them don't. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, let's start from don't. there. Let's talk about what is the difference between you having a heart attack and you having a high blood pressure. Could it lead? Could one lead to the other? Okay. Yeah. One can lead to the other. For example, if you have hypertension, you can have actually, you can actually have heart attack. But having heart attack doesn't necessarily mean you have hypertension, and this is the way it works. Uh, heart attacks happen because there's a there's like a blockage to the mm. blood flow mm. into the system mm. from the or Fats probably to the or, from the heart. Yeah. So let's say the the blood there's a blood clot. We call it blood clot. Mm. Let, imagine a pipe. Let's say a piping system now. So there's something inside that pipe that is obstructing the flow of water. Mm. So let's say that water now is now going into the heart. Mm. That 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 pipe now is the artery. If enough blood doesn't go to some particular part of the heart it will be dying slowly. Mm. Use the word dying slowly in brackets. So it's, it's having to have some effect, which you call free radicals effect and all that. Mm. When that happens, people start having this chest pain. Mm -hmm. We call it myocardial infarction mm. and all that. They start having chest pain and all that. And it can expand because you know blood is not getting to a particular part of the heart. So it starts getting more, getting more. Before you know it, people develop heart attack. Mm. So that's when you see most of the time they always hold. Clutch their yes, chest. Yes, because yeah. enough blood is not getting to a particular part. Mm. And remember, the heart is still the same vessel that will pump this blood all around. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing happens when we have something called atherosclerosis. Those mm. are like the things that say can block the blood vessel. Mm. And it's from the things we eat, lack of exercise, smoking mm. and all that. Signing in beach, they start forming. Mm. When such clots happen in the brain, that's what results into stroke. Mm. When it happens in the heart, that's what causes heart attack. Whoa. So okay, that's so the way it works. Let's head back to high blood pressure now. Yeah. So what causes it? Wow, that's a one million and one question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> first of it. all, uh, we have to look into the family history. Mm. I think that's like the commonest thing in this environment. Mm. Then two, we look at our lifestyle. Mm. Talking of the family history, once there's issue of hypertension in your family, mother, father, great friend, but there's likelihood that you might develop it at a time. Mm. But that aside, you look at the lifestyle of almost everybody. Most people don't even do exercise anymore. Mm. Most people don't eat rightly anymore. Uh, most people drink alcohol excessively. Most mm. people smoke and all that. So when you bring all these things together, they are what make us develop this hypertension. Then look at Lagos, for, for instance. The ozus, the bustles, everybody wake up in the morning. Stress, majorly. So all those things together make a lot of people develop hypertension. And that's why you won't be surprised if Lagos is one of the highest areas where you have most people with hypertension. But can, can hypertension be prevented? Even when you have a family history of it, even, you know, how, if it can be prevented, how? Yes. Yeah, this, this is why I love preventive and social medicine. Mm. Uh, almost everything can be prevented, including mm. hypertension. Mm. If you have the history in your family, you know that you are at risk of this. At early stage, you can start doing some certain things. Mm. Watch your diet. Something we call the DASH diet. It's, it's like a dietary approach to stop hypertension. Mm. That alone can reduce the high blood pressure to more than 30, 40 Percent. Okay. So if you have started monitoring that from when you have not even developed the hypertension, almost everybody can be on that diet without having hypertension. Mm. Before you know it, if you have it before, it starts coming down. If you don't have it, it's going to prevent it from... Then exercise. Mm. 
Mm. You cannot you cannot overestimate what exercises can do. Exercise alone can make you not to have hypertension. A lot of people come to us and they say they have hypertension, and we don't necessarily start them on drugs immediately. Mm. We just talk about the diet, talk about exercise, and most of them will not end up taking drugs, and mm. the BP gets controlled. Mm. So when you follow those two things, it's a way of you preventing hypertension, even managing it. Mm. So it can be prevented. I want to ask about the diets, but before we talk about the diets, I'm going to take you back to the causes, because I know you said they are very broad. Yeah. However, I've actually had people, you know, say what led to their high blood pressure was probably because of stress or thinking too much. How does that relate? What, how, how then does stress or overthinking cause it? Mm. <laughs> I, I remember one story of one of my patients, I cannot mention names. So, in fact, most patients, when you tell them that you have hypertension, yeah, I don't think, I mean, you know, this kind of thing. We always think that most people that have hypertension is just because they are thinking. Mm. If you look at the cycle of thinking, thinking can cause a lot of things. Mm. Because it's not directly related to hypertension, mm. but indirectly it is. Mm. Because uh, when you think a lot, you probably won't have a good sleep. Mm -hmm. When you don't have good sleep, you probably might not eat rightly. Mm -hmm. You probably might maybe be in a financial issue that is going to cascade the whole of that reaction. Of course, when you don't sleep, the, your circadian rhythm, every, rhythm, everything gets manipulated. Mm -hmm. It's the accumulation of all these things. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect the blood flow, overload on your heart. Your heart walking around the time when you're supposed to be sleeping mm -hmm. and resting and relaxing and all. All these things. Is going to make you develop hypertension. That's why thinking comes in. When a lot of people say that, how is thinking causing hypertension? So it's like that. Because the, the heart is supposed to rest at a particular time, but you are thinking all through the night. Mm. You keep pumping, you are worried, you keep You're pumping. You're not sleeping. Yeah. You're so not all, resting. All, all those things are stress, food to the heart itself. You mm. keep pumping when you stop. But then when you are not even eating rightly, mm. the heart that is not resting, you are not eating well, mm. you started having some clots around the system, mm. it's getting narrowed, the heart has to pump through a narrow pipe. Which is That's, more pressure. Which is more pressure. Hmm. So, because hypertension means the tension is a lot. Hmm. So, it's just that simple. Okay. So, now, back to the diet. What are the things one can put in their diet using the DASH method yes. to ensure that you prevent um, high blood pressure to a large extent? Okay. Uh, a lot of food that are low in sodium. Hmm. Sodium, we see a lot of sodium in our, in our salt. So you, so you have to cancel out noodles then? Uh, well, I won't say cancel it out. You, you can find a way to, to make sure that Once it's not excessive. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let your food be low in sodium. Don't put too much salt in your food. Mm. And research shows that some food that are high in potassium and magnesium, mm. you can see all these things in, in nuts. Mm. A lot of bodies not contain potassium, magnesium, and all that. Then fresh vegetables. Mm. Most times you don't have to break the bank to eat rightly. In fact, not eating LD at times is more expensive than eating yeah, LD. Yeah, true. You understand? So when you eat a when lot you of food... When you want to buy a pie, and you can use that pie, you know, 500 naira to buy vegetables. Exactly. Exactly. You can yeah. buy maybe garden egg or cucumber yeah. or those kind of things. Yeah. Greens. These greens are really, really very good. Mm. So I, I, I think we, we are not rating our dietitians enough. Mm. A, a lot of us actually need to probably have a relationship with one or two diet. You don't need to spend money. They can just take your normal thing you have at home, your rice, your beans, your vegetables and all, and prepare a dash diet for you from that. Mm. Eat a lot of granite, eat a lot of peanuts, take vegetables, take fresh fruits and mm. all. And if you go to the village, you see that most of these people are not as stressed as we are in Lagos. Mm. They work hard. It's not easy to go to the farm and walk and walk mm. and all. But... Most of them what, the, what, what are the options available for G6PD? Because you can't have nuts, you can't eat beans. What then can you eat to make up for those dietary for, for, losses? So, yeah, for those that they, they have um, glucose deficiency yes. and all that. So the options are available because there are some lactose-free mm. and there are some other things that is not going to contain the pathway of the G6PD deficiency. A lot of options are available. That's why mm. I said dietitians are key in all mm. these things. It's just because we don't prioritize the importance of some of these professionals. Mm. It's, it's so easy to get your Dutch diet. Even with the GCSPD, there are some certain diet that they can design for them that's going to work. Okay, so now that we've established the ways to prevent it, we've talked about how to manage it. In what other ways can one ensure that they are able to live a life in which they are, you know, able to better manage being hypertensive? hypertensive. Mm. Ah, this is where data comes in. Mm. 
I, I read something not so long ago that over 70 million Nigerians have hypertension, less than 20 million is on treatment. Mm. So that means up to like 40 million people are not managing their hypertension very well. And why is that? We have to look at it from government policy. If there are some policies that are made again, because if you look at the data, hypertension itself results in a lot of work absenteeism and spending a whole lot of money. Mm. So when there are some, some work policies that prevent people from having to do some certain things. You see some people, they walk into the late night, like seven, eight, get home by 10. Six days a week. Six days a week. Mm. Some people work Monday to Sunday, they have to do weekends and yeah. all. So policies have to be, to be, to be channeled to, to help people to, to have a good- And respected as well. Yes, and respected as well. Then awareness, medications have to be subsidized. A lot of people spend so much money to buy this medication. Imagine you are spending about, 5,000 weekly to buy hypertensive drugs and all mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. if you have a way of doing a good health system mm -hmm. where people don't have to pay out of pocket mm -hmm. to do all this whole thing, mm -hmm. it's made people to either manage their hypertension very well or prevent it. So all I, these I things. Like, I like that angle of yours because when you think about it, antiviral drugs are free, largely, exactly. but then you have to pay so much uh, for yeah. hypertension, yes. which is, uh, of course, uh, an unfortunate yes. thing. But thank you so much for your time, Dr. Diron you, Nifade. It's been an interesting conversation. Yeah. And thank you as well well uh, for watching uh, this uh, segment of the show.